Removing retained eye caps from a leopard gecko is one of the most satisfying and immediately life-changing actions that I've ever performed. Let's get into it. All I need is a pair of clean forceps and some warm saline. I'm using the saline solution on a cotton ball to help soften the keratin. This makes it easier and a lot safer to remove. This type of buildup may look like pus, but it's actually just layers upon layers of keratin. Geckos with vitamin A hypovitaminosis will shed their skin excessively back to back to back. And sometimes this leads their caretaker to believe that they're growing or doing well. However, this excessive overproduction of keratin is a warning sign. When reptiles experience a deficiency of vitamin A or hypovitaminosis, their body starts having shedding issues, which cause buildup often around the mouth, nose, and eyes. This gecko has all of the classic symptoms. Its eyes are not only swollen, but its mouth is as well. These symptoms may be confusing to pet owners and even veterinarians who aren't experienced with this type of deficiency. They might attempt to treat it as an eye or mouth infection when this is simply not the case. It is possible for secondary infections to erupt, so it's important to have an animal evaluated by a veterinarian who is specializing in reptiles, if at all possible. I am not a veterinarian, but I am experienced in dealing with this exact issue. If done correctly, this process is not painful, but it is a little bit uncomfortable for the gecko to be restrained. However, firm but gentle restraint is absolutely necessary to keep her safe during this process. And there it is, the keratin plug is removed. I can only imagine the amount of relief this gecko is feeling right now. But my work here is not done. There's still one more eye to work on. Once again, I begin softening the keratin plug with warm saline. The process may look a little bit invasive, but it's absolutely necessary to save this gecko's eyesight. I'm not using the forceps to grab the eye itself, of course. I'm only touching the keratin plug, and it's actually quite dense. This one seems to be a little bit more stubborn than the other side. Vitamin A deficiency is completely avoidable. Feeding a variety of feeder insects instead of just one type and using a high-quality multivitamin is all it takes. Leopard geckos in captivity need their calcium supplemented as well as a multivitamin. It's extremely important not to skip these steps and to follow the manufacturer's directions when giving these vitamins. Unfortunately, hypovitaminosis is becoming more and more common in captive reptiles. Just like metabolic bone disease, hypovitaminosis is easier to prevent than it is to treat. And unfortunately, I've seen multiple pet owners assume that their gecko no longer has eyes or that its eyes are too far gone to save. And they avoid treatment. If your reptile is displaying symptoms like these, please don't hesitate to ask for help. The longer it continues, the more likely that there is permanent damage. While I'm working on getting a hold of the keratin cap, it's important to remember that I'm not in any contact with the animal's eye. The eye is tucked back behind this cap, and the cap is stretching the eyelids outward. This can make it look like the eyes themselves are swollen. Amazingly, the eyelids often return to a normal position very quickly once these are removed. Here's the second keratin cap, and it's even larger than the first one. The eyelids are stretched, but they're returning to a normal size. And if you look closely, you can see the eye peeking out. The sense of immediate relief has to be absolutely immense for the gecko. I couldn't even imagine what that type of obstruction would feel like. Moving forward with the correct type of supplementation and care, this gecko is going to be just fine. Leopard geckos can live over 20 years with the right type of care. This gecko's future is looking a whole lot brighter. It all starts with education and the desire to do better. What a difference we can make.